uh, in my book, Fixing the Moral Deficit, I point out that we've got a deficit crisis, a poverty crisis, and a justice crisis. We've got a deficit crisis for, because over the last 50 years, for every year except about five or six, the federal government has spent more money than it has taken in. So it's been borrowing and borrowing, and now we have a huge federal debt, which is becoming economically dangerous. We've got a poverty crisis because the richest nation in human history has the highest poverty level of any industrialized nation, and that poverty level has gone up and up. And we've got a justice crisis because some people want to solve the deficit crisis, the debt crisis, by doing it on the backs of the poor. And other people want to just forget about it uh, and not worry about it. But in fact, we can't do that. That's economically disastrous if we continue. But also, it's simply unfair uh, because we're putting it on our grandchildren's credit cards. I say that grandpa's using your credit card. Uh, and that's just unfair to ask our grandchildren to pay for what we want now, but won't tax ourselves to, in fact, um, uh, enable the government to provide. Now, when you think about what to do about those triple crises, you need to be clear on biblical principles, and you need to be clear on key facts. The Bible is clear. God has a special concern for the poor. Uh, God demands justice for everyone. Uh, the Bible is also clear that um, uh, everyone in society has a responsibility to empower the poor. Individuals, churches, uh, non-governmental organizations, but also the Bible is very clear, government has an important role to empower poor people. And so we need to ask what government properly does uh, on this crucial issue. The facts are especially important, and, and one is especially crucial, and that is that we have more inequality in this nation than at any time since 1928. The richest 1% uh, own 90% of all the wealth in this country. And over the last 30 years, the poor have actually lost ground, but the rich have gained enormously. From, 207, uh, from 203 to 207, two-thirds of all the growth in income in the whole country went to the richest 1%. That's simply unfair. Uh, we need to change it. Most Americans agree that's unjust. So what do we do? Well, in the book, I, um, I talk about uh, ways that we can change public policy. I suggest that we ought to have a 50-50 approach, cut federal expenditures, uh, and solve the deficit crisis by half in that way, and also increase federal income, uh, increase taxes, uh, and solve it uh, partly in that way. And I talk about how to do that. Uh, we're going to have to uh, make some changes in Social Security and in Medicare and Medicaid uh, and get rid of programs that don't work and uh, get rid of duplicative programs. Uh, but uh, we also need to, in fact, increase taxes. You know, uh, millionaires could afford a little more taxes. Uh, and multimillionaires, people making uh, more than $5 million a year, you know, they can afford uh, uh, an increase of 10% uh, in their taxes. Uh, all of us, I think, should um, pay some, and I've got a proposal for saying how anybody who files federal income taxes ought to have a modest increase in their federal taxes. But the people with the greatest wealth ought to um, have the heaviest burden. So what do you and I do? Uh, well. Uh, in the back of the book, I talk about concrete things that we can do. You can um, go back and look at the hundreds and hundreds of biblical verses that talk about God's concern for the poor. You can get a copy of Fixing the Moral Deficit and decide to have a little study group, uh, some grandparents, um, some grandchildren, and some people in between, and study the book and talk about it uh, for a few weeks. You can go to your pastor and say, could we have a study group in our church and work at this? You can uh, make sure you're registered to vote. Uh, you can read the newspaper and keep an eye on these things because this is current in terms of American politics. Our politicians are talking about it. We'll be talking about it. At my organization, Evangelicals for Social Action, we're uh, working regularly on this. We have a whole program called Demand Economic Justice. There's a call for intergenerational justice on that. You can come and sign that. Just go to evangelicalsforsocialaction.org and uh, sign that statement. Uh, you'll get regular updates um, if you sign up for our e-epistle. And uh, if thousands and thousands of people join together, our politicians will have to listen. And we can, in fact, change things. We can fix the budget deficit without doing it on the backs of the poor 
and we can fix it in a way that's fair to our grandchildren. We must do that. Please join us. Thank you.